In this video, let's examine this default project that was created when we created a new JavaFX application. Uh, we'll go through the code, we'll look at it, we'll see if we can figure out what some of these things are. So first of all, you might notice that we have a method called start and we also have our main method. Okay. So there are actually two methods involved in JavaFX applications. So start is the entry point for all JavaFX applications. So the code we write here is what gets the Java application running. The main method is still required though and the main method actually launches JavaFX. Once JavaFX runs, uh, it will hit the start, message, uh, start method to start figuring out what we want to do with our program. So the first thing we come to in this is a button object. So we're creating a new button. And as you know, the new keyword creates a new object from the button class in this case. Uh, and we're signing it to a variable called button. And that button now exists out in memory. So because it's an object, uh, it has methods associated with it, fields and methods. Uh, so it obviously has a text field, and it has a set text method to set the text field. And that's, as you can probably figure out, uh, the text field is what's going to be displayed on the button. So we're calling that button object, we're calling it set text method, and we're setting the text to uh, say hello world. Uh, buttons have some other options. We'll look at them more as we go, but here to give you an idea, I have a little graphic. We can do things like button get text. We can set the minimum height for the button. We can set the layout for the button on the X. You know, that's its position. Uh, we can set the layout from the Y, which sets its Y position. We could test to see if the button's being pressed. Um, so there's lots of things we can do. With buttons. The next thing we're going to under, we need to understand is that buttons are nodes. So everything in JavaFX is called a node. So a button is a node and every node is either something that displays on the screen or it's a node that probably contains other nodes. Now we'll talk about different ways of doing that as we go. Uh, so we can have button nodes we can have uh, geometric figures and drawings as nodes. We can do pie charts as nodes of scroll bars. Uh, we can do images. Uh, we can apply an image. It's called an image view. Uh, it will hold an image that we can load from a file if we want to. Uh, and that image view uh, is considered a node. Everything's a node. If it's, uh, if it's not a node that displays something, it's a node that contains other nodes because we need to keep our project organized. The next thing we see here on our button um, is technically it's an, anonymous, it's an anonymous inner class. It's an event handler. What happens when somebody pushes the button? This is the event handler that handles it. So we're creating a new event handler object uh, from this anonymous inner class. And it has a handle method. And that's where we're actually putting the code when somebody clicks that button, BTN is going to print to the console. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at those a little bit more. We'll also look at something called Lambda expressions, which is a little bit neater way to write those things. All right, so how do we create a node? Well, we've already created a button right here. Let's create another button. So I'm going to create a button by declaring it. I'm going to call this button two. And I'll make a new button. Fantastic. I'll even button two. We'll just follow the example there. We're going to set the text to say push. It's a button that just says push. Um, Great. I'm not even going to do a handler for it. Uh, we could do a handler for it, but I'm going to skip that for now. Let's go ahead and run our application. 
See what happens? And there is my push button. Excuse me. That was not my push button. That was my other button because this should be button two. All right. So here's button one that says hello world and button two that says just says push. When I run, I do not see button two. So let's, I, I only see button one because remember we made button two and it's out in memory, but we haven't displayed it yet. So how do we display it? Okay. We have to add each node to something called the root node. So right down here, uh, after we've created the buttons, uh, we've created an event handler for one of the buttons. Uh, we have this line of code that creates something called a stack pane. And that stack pane is our root node. And we almost always, as by convention, you want to call it root. Uh, it's just kind of the way everybody does it. Our root node uh, is going to be this stack pane. Well, what's a stack pane? Well, it's just a pane that stacks everything right on top of each other. All right. So, and you notice here, once I've created the stack pane called root, I say root. I call its method that gets a list of all of its children. And then to that list, I'm going to add my button node. So I didn't do that to button two. I didn't add button two to my, to my root node yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call a root get children. I'm going to add button 2. So now let's run it. All right, and then you can see my first button's back there, and then the second button we created that says push is right in front of it. It stacked them on top of each other because that's what a stack pane does. It's a way of organizing things, and maybe for this organization, uh, for this project, we want things stacked on top of each other. I don't think it's a great idea to stack buttons on top of each other, but we used a stack pane, uh, so that's what happened. Let's talk about some other kinds of panes. We have anchor panes. If you look at an anchor pane, it gives us a way we can anchor a, a node to the left or top, or this one's anchored to the left. This is anchored to the bottom. We have a border pane that creates borders. We have a flow plane, pane that kind of just tries to put everything into a box and uh, just let it kind of flow in. We have a grid pane where we can set things according to a grid. There's a horizontal box which sets things evenly spaced within a horizontal box. Here's stack pane that stacks all our nodes on top of each other that we saw. We have a tile pane, and this this particular tile pane was tiling th is tiling things easy. That works great if they're all the same size. And we also have a V box which stacks th uh, uh, arranges things vertically. So how do we create one of these other panes? If a stack pane was created that way, what if I made my root node something different? So let's make it. Um, Uh, can I do H box here? Not sure I can. But let's try it. I'm going to do an H box. Okay. And get my little bulb over here I need to import Java effects scene that layout hbox in order to use that and I did that and there's my hbox right there my import for that okay so now my root instead of a stack pane it's now an hbox what does that mean horizontal box let's see what happens let's just run it and see what happens 
So now my root is this horizontal box. Okay, and you can see that they're laid out next to each other horizontally. What do you think would happen if it was V box? Let's try it. V box, V box. Of course, we all have to import V box into our project. Let's run it again with our buttons added to a V box. And there we go. Hello world and push. Now they're arranged vertically. All right, so we're not quite done yet. Okay, we, we've experimented with some things. I will go ahead and leave that V box there. Uh, what comes after that? I have something here called a scene. Okay, so my scene was created with the new keyword right here, and it created it with that root node. So I've taken this root node, and I'd add, I've added it to this scene. And 300 and 250 were the size of the scene. Okay, so we add our root to a scene node. And then what happens? We have a primary stage. That we set the title on. And we set the title to Hello World. And then on the primary stage, we set the scene to a scene. And then we told our primary stage, hey, show yourself. So let's take a look at our application again. Let me run it. Okay. So primary scene, this, this set title was up here for Hello World is right there. So if I wanted to change that, I would change the set title. Okay. I added the scene, uh, which was the V box, um, to the root. No, excuse me. I added the V-Box to the scene and the scene to the primary stage. All right, so let's take a look. I've got a diagram here I want to show you. So here's the idea. We have a root node, and we've added nodes to it. And that root node got added to a scene, and that scene is on a stage. And the way that it's really good to think about this is to think about a play that you've been to. You go to a play and you have that big giant stage there. And there's an opening scene and there's props and visual things and people in the scene. Okay. The stage curtains close and a bunch of people behind the curtains do some magic things. And they move some of the props around and now when it opens back up, it's a different scene. So we can build multiple scenes and swap the scenes out on the stage. Okay. Each scene contains a root node and that root node can contain all kinds of other nodes. So it's important to remember that everything is a node. So we can have a root node that contains other nodes those other nodes can be different kinds of panes. Uh, so here's an example graphic. Uh, we could have a group as a root node, and we're going to talk about groups in the next video. Uh, a group as a root node, but that node could contain a horizontal box, an H box. Okay? And that H box might contain three buttons. And, and basically what it does is this is our root node. Uh, Group, root node in the window and inside it we have a horizontal box and that horizontal box contains the three buttons and we can use these different kinds of panes like H boxes and V boxes and the things we've been talking about to organize other nodes. So it's a series of nesting scenes in, in stages and nodes inside scenes and other nodes inside those nodes. So in the next video, we're going to look at the group as a root node and see how we can use that, because that kind of lets us place things wherever we want to place them.